I oh, it. Should we go ahead Miles and start eight? early? Well, so it's Key West Lane. What are you talking about? Yeah, all the way from missing throughout near, near, New Era, where those homes oh, are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to call him first. Oh, yeah, my watch the 7. That's close. Okay. All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Oh, is that right? Okay, good. All right, welcome, everyone. You're welcome. We have a few things to do and something to celebrate through this meeting today. We're going to start. Uh, with uh, roll call as soon as. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do the roll call? Oh, roll yeah, call. Sorry. I can do roll call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, please report uh, your name. If you. Doug DeHart, I'm here. <laughs> Bill Clark. <laughs> Ryan Boyce. Ginger Redlinger. Doug Neely. Richard Craven. Jerry Herman. 100% here today. Excellent. Okay, we're going to start. You can see who you are. Hey, you did? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. You were too worried about having to say your own name. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, right. We're going to start off today with interviews for the open committees. And uh, our first interviewee is currently in Mexico. And uh, Pete is attempting to get him on the phone. For a point of order, should yes. Bill Clark step down? La marcación a teléfonos celulares de México cambió. Marque uno de... Yes. Anybody know that? <laughs> yes, yeah, so as a, a point of order, that would be true. Uh, I don't know if he needs to step down at this point or if he needs to step down when it's his turn. Uh, Anyone know? Pete and I were talking about that. Yeah. Well, um, well, your term officially ends at the end of December. Mm -hmm. right? You're in your position, you're just being in for the potential report. Mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever the committee feels. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I think it's kind of awkward for somebody sitting here also to be an interviewee. I, my, yeah. My, pre well, my, preference sure. is that one, my personal preference is yeah. that one. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> all right, so Bill, would you mind? Not at all. All right, thank you very much. Bill has agreed to, as an interviewee, to join uh, the other interviewees. Uh, I think there's room out there. There's a few empty chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so, yep. so we're going to attempt to call Trent. I did a dry run earlier, and it worked fine, but it was in English, not Spanish. Okay. Well, yeah, I want to make an announcement i'm going to resign at the end of the year 2017 so, this year 2016. Okay. 15. Uh, 15. hello trent yeah hello Kim. yeah end of the month in you other can words. hear us okay. I'm, uh, just yes i can too busy i should be off doing something else right now you know but you hang in there one second okay no problem Yeah, who are we talking about? Well, Trent. 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 Trent uh, okay, yeah. Trent, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. All right. We just called the roll. We have uh, our uh, seven members here, um, and they can hear you, and you can hear them. I, so okay. um, why don't we just kick it off with some questions, and if you want to ask the First question, Ginger. Hi, Trent. This is Ginger Redlinger. I'm currently the chair. And oh, nice uh, to meet you, Ginger. Nice to meet you, too, and, and welcome to the interview process. I'm going to ask a question, then hand it off to another member of the committee. My question to you is, uh, why are you applying for the Natural Resources Committee? Tell us about your interests. Um, so I, uh, my wife and I moved to town uh, last year in June, so we've been here about a year and a half now. And um, I've, uh, I don't know, I've kind of gotten to really enjoy uh, Oregon City as kind of a more of a community feel than some of the other bedroom communities I've, I've been in times past. And so when the, uh, the announcement came out for um, volunteers for uh, the different volunteer committees for the city, I saw the natural resource one. And uh, that piqued my interest because I've been working in the natural resource industry for the past 16 years, uh, going to college for a forest management degree. Um, I currently work as an inventory forester for a company in Van uh, Vancouver. We manage about 1.5 million acres here in the Northwest. And um, I've kind of run the whole gauntlet of uh, 
different uh, jobs through the industry I've done, uh, refor uh, uh, like the civil forester, which we we're the ones that come in and we replant trees. Um, uh, we uh, try to do other activities to make sure those trees grow. Um, I've done uh, operation. I've done an operations analyst job, which was basically kind of land records. So a lot of a lot of work with adjacent landowners, um, doing communication or trying to uh, let them know what activities we're doing, or try to get access agreements or easements across property for each other and that kind of stuff and um so it just it kind of piqued my interest and thought i could bring a lot to the table um as far as experience goes and knowledge um dealing with natural resources and um uh, kind of yeah, just just hope to hope to provide what i've learned through the years to better the community all right thank you would like to ask the second question yes um You've, you've indicated here your background, and actually, I guess uh, you've, you've answered the question uh, that's here is what is your background in natural resources, so I'm going to ask you another one, <laughs> if I may. Okay. And the question yep. I, I've got is, uh, do you know of any, uh, uh, are you aware of any of the programs or projects or developments going on in Oregon, <laughs> City, that, in Oregon City that are, uh, that have natural resource uh, implications? I, I perused as much as I or a little a few times I have uh, on the internet there looking through some of your past meeting minutes and some of your stuff and um, I noticed that uh, some one of the major focuses is was uh, dealing with Oregon City's GIS system um, and I or just you guys had some input on it and um, I know I, I've spent again the last 16 years that's been one of my primary focuses is Dealing with uh, the different uh, tree farms that I've worked on and their different uh, GIS information and data and how to create maps and how to utilize that information and, and leverage it as much as you can to improve processes and uh, information flow and that kind of thing. And uh, so that, that, I mean, that's one thing that definitely um, I spent a lot of time doing and have a lot of you know, quite a bit of knowledge on. Uh, so that, that piqued my interest. And, um, uh, beyond beyond that, I, I didn't I haven't taught a whole lot um, else here lately, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to jump in wherever I can to provide help so, or or information or views or anything. So. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Trent, I'm Richard Craven. How are you? Nice to meet you, Richard. Yep. And um, it seems like we have a problem trying to get out to the public in terms of making the public aware of, of environmental issues or trying to solicitate or solicit uh, questions from the public uh, concerning environmental things. Um, have you had any experience in um, outreach programs or what might you suggest to uh, try to generate more interest? Um, yeah, I have had a lot of experience with that. Um, back when I was a uh, civil culture forester, um, we did a lot of um, uh, herbicide spraying or aerial application of stuff. And so we always had to definitely be very careful when we dealt with uh, adjacent landowners. And the best, the best way in, in that instance was to do a face-to-face -face meet and just try to listen to their concerns and then um, address them as much as we can. And, and in those instances, it was basically the, the easiest thing was is that we, we didn't want to push anybody to the brink of they thought that we were going to be doing something on their property. So we would always like err uh, on the side of caution and just like, all right, we're going to back off a half mile from your property and not do anything. Um, as far as being able to stir up any kind of or, um, uh, stir up uh, interest and stuff, um, I mean, communication is, it's, that's been one of the biggest things with the natural resources side for many, many years. I mean, it's, it's, uh, people get their own ideas and, um, it's, it's definitely hard to, um, to, uh, make sure, or, and, and people have a tendency, and, and I'm just, or the natural resources industry is just as guilty as any other party is that they, they, they tend to be one sided on their views of things. So, uh, I mean, collaboration and having, um, try to have good discussion and, and, be, um, I guess, not not uh, combative. I mean, I mean, I know going into discussions that I've had you have to be like they're going to have what they want to say, and you can't go back at them saying, "Oh no, you're wrong." You have to listen to what they have to say and try to address those as best possible. Um, so, th any kind of opportunity to to um, I guess listen to 
all sides and, and try to then bring those sides together and talk about it is, is uh, the best ways I've, I've dealt with situations like that before in my, my past experiences. Okay, it sounds like you've had a lot of what I would call wild land experience, but Oregon, yeah. Ci Oregon City would be more of an urban experience. Well, it's been wild in the past. And wild in the past, <laughs> yes, it has. And um, you I know, I don't know. It's kind of wild in a few places. <laughs> and you have a lot of neighborhood associations, where it's it's uh, more like an educational uh, function, I guess. And I think we have problems trying to. Um, get that out to the neighborhood associations, but also getting people involved in those. And in our neighborhood, That's correct, yeah. In our neighborhood, we don't have a lot of people going to the neighborhood association meetings. And so it's it's kind of like, how do you generate the interest? You know. Yeah, and that's a good point. I know um, in times past, uh, we have worked around some smaller communities, uh, usually a lot smaller than Oregon City, say like, I don't know, 50 or 100 people. And so it was easy to kind of go in and say, all right, we would like to meet with you folks and have them do that. Um, as far as Oregon City goes, I mean, um, yeah, I guess like you said, outreach is, is critical, and I mean, if it comes to... I mean, like I said, communication always best happens if you can do it face to face. I know that takes time and effort and money and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but I guess if if it all comes down to it to try to get people to come, it's I, I guess you got to try to take it to them as okay. much as you can. So. Thank you. I'll pass that to somebody else. Jerry, do you have a question? Um, <clears throat> I was going to build on the question, the Jerry Herman. Um, the question I guess I'm going to follow up with uh, Richard was uh, really post, uh, focusing in on the community involvement component. We we uh, used to have a lot of people coming into these meetings, and uh, tonight it, we have you three. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it'd be nice to see more of a community turnout. When you were involved as a resource information forester, did you have have to coordinate meetings uh, where the public would be involved directly, and or recruit them to uh, participate? Yes. Yeah, um, like like I said, um, in uh, we uh, a lot of times when it came to the either um, kind of uh, adjacent operations that may impact somebody's mm -hmm. view shed or um, could potentially uh, just bring uh, they could see our activities on the property. Um, there was a number of times where I would either go out and meet with individuals or at the same time um, uh, then try to meet with some individuals and we would uh, try to schedule a, like a town meeting and say, hey, um, let's all everybody get together and uh, I just want to listen to your concerns. I don't want to try to force what I, my, my views or, or anything down your throats, but it's just like, let's, let's have a collaborative meeting and um, I want to I wanna work the best that we can because I don't want to be on anybody's or didn't want to be on anybody's adverse side of the view of things. So. Um, so yeah, we have done some. Uh, I have done outreach like that before. Um, same thing uh, when I was an operations analyst. Um, I would actually have to go meet with communities. Um, we had one up in northern northern Washington uh, where there was a they did, they didn't have an easement, but um, a legal easement across our property. But they had been using it for a while. So we met with them and uh, collaborated with, collaborated with them to come up with a mutual agreement that. Uh, served at both sides as far as access goes. And I, I like said, I mean, everybody's, uh, it was great to get those people together because you can hear their concerns, hear their issues, and, and try to address those or address those as much as you can and, and try to uh, undo any uh, other beliefs that they may have that we're trying to do something to them that may not be proper. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Next question to you. Sure, I can right. do one of the ones here. Okay. What types of projects would you think that the Natural Resources Committee ought to be working on? Um, I know, uh, I mean, there's quite a bit of a, I mean, not a, a, a lot of urban, inter, urban rural, there's, there is some urban, inter, uh, rural interface there in Oregon City. So I imagine that, um, <clears throat> trying to make sure that uh, or working with 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 issues that regarding I don't I'm not exactly sure what kind of um, whole, uh, natural property holdings that Oregon City has itself but um, I know as far as like I, I would imagine that 
the National Resource Committee would probably be working a lot with like the planning committee and, and other committees within the, the um, city government and stuff that would have to do with like urban, urban rural interface, um, any kind of urban planning thing. Um, probably work maybe some with the Parks and Rec Department uh, to deal with any potential issues on those sides. Um, and like, like I said, I, I know, know one thing or about that, the GIS issue, or the GIS system that the, the city's running, um, that probably have some input with that, try to make sure that all the information is as correct as possible and, and pr try to serve it out and make it more useful for everybody. I guess that was, that was probably also another, or one question I was going to have was for you guys is what, what kind of stuff you guys are working on too. Okay. Okay. All right. Doug? Uh, Doug DeHart, a member of the committee. Well, let me ask a question that, that maybe partially answers your question. Uh, the, uh, the, the city has, has adopted uh, several uh, 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 different statutes having to do with aspects of, of urban trees and there's a lot of interest in uh, urban tree management within the city and uh, I understand there's some possibility that in the future the the city would take on developing a, uh, a more comprehensive uh, set of set of policies to guide the uh, the retention strategies to uh, uh, guide the retention and management of uh, trees on public and privately held land within the city. Uh, do you have some thoughts about that or some ideas about how you would like to see that approached? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, here in the Northwest, I mean, the, the trees are kind of the major, major structure in all of our lives. And um, um, I know it's, I know I've always heard the stories about the city of Portland and stuff like that on their their really their their program and how they kind of go about it, um, and and like I said, I think in, in in Oregon City itself, I mean, being able to manage manage the what what uh, timber or what kind of trees that you have not timber sorry of uh, the trees that you have on on the public or private ground um, to be able to keep them healthy and um, and uh, kind of management manage them in a in a uh, in a way that it benefits everybody, um, so that they can keep keep them healthy and keep them growing into the future. Because um, I know, like, like I said, when especially when you're dealing with private property, if it, you come in and say, "Oh, somebody can't cut a tree," or I, I know it, there, there has to be a set of policies that can kind of work to everybody's benefit. And um, um, as far as <laughs> ideas go, um, I just, does the I guess. Uh, that, that kind of brings up more questions in my mind. Unfortunately, um, I guess do, does the does the city have a, 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 an inventory or account of the trees as they are right now, or um, is, is it kind of just uh, dealt on a like a base or a stand bay or, an, or an area by area basis? Well, great question. Um, we have the GIS system, and it's pretty detailed and uh, it's fine grained. So. We have some tree data, we have some street tree data, but we don't have a comprehensive inventory. Uh, we, know, yeah. we know canopy coverage approximately, yep. that sort of thing, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, I mean, uh, becoming, <clears throat> I, I know uh, I've worked a lot with, uh, with, the, with the inventory side of things here, and it, it is becoming easier and easier to, to become or have like a, a tree, like a tree list or tree inventory. Um, as if, if the time and available to have it and uh, I, I don't know what the actual um, areas of interest are and how big they are but it's, it's actually become a lot easier here in the, in the in the future to be able to quickly take that information and get it into a database system uh, and tag it to GIS and be able to do a lot of information with that mm -hmm. uh, be able to do a lot of, of uh, processing and, and come up with uh, summary results to be able to spit it out and uh, give you give you a readout of exactly what you have so uh, that would be definitely potentially one idea if you could work that into the all the systems that are going on right now so mm -hmm. okay well that about wraps up our time for this interview yeah just yeah. Uh, a that's couple of, he, because he, that was, he, he indicated he might have a couple of questions yeah. of us too right so any other questions that you have Trent um I guess uh, 
what um, what what exactly is the uh, or is your guys's view on on how you want to and uh, how you want to see how the natural resource committee kind of progresses into the future um, just just for my view well i can just answer for the structure i can't answer for the direction but um, the 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 committee spent quite a bit of time working on a new set of bylaws recently were adopted by the city commission and then they have an, an an annual work plan which they up to they keep up to date so that's kind of like the working thing we also get a lot of information from public works and from the planning uh, in terms of the projects they have and their impacts on stormwater and so forth and uh, and from from uh, planning itself in terms of the impact that uh, of developments that are coming in that'll affect the water resources in the area you may know it. we have also two very large holdings by the metro regional government of open spaces in Oregon City that uh, abut our city. Um, okay. well, about 250 acres in Newell Creek Canyon that uh, much of it is within the city and also yep. uh, along the bluff there about three, 320 acres of uh, land that they're working as for oak savanna habitat. So we've got some great natural resources abutting us. Yeah, oh, it sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. I guess I I, I figured that the uh, because the the canyon you're talking about that's between two thirteen and basically like the hospital area and like yes. that whole stretch. Is that my guess? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've, I I thought figured that the city had owned that, but I, I just never really dove into it and figured it out. But no, that's great to know. Okay. okay. Well, I appreciate your your guys' ability to or call me and and all that um and and or consider me for the position so. Um, All right. Well, appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoy your uh, okay. enjoy your time in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right. Um, well, we have Dorothy. Why don't you come up and, since you're a guest? You sit up here Please. <coughs> where Where in Mexico was he? You don't know. Hmm. Again, my name is Dorothy Dalsred. I'm also known as Dee Dee, so oh. either okay. stutter I All answer. Right. <laughs> well, welcome, Dee Dee. Thank yes. you. Uh, so we'll kind of repeat the process here and so we can learn more about you. Uh, so please tell me why you're applying for the position. Well, I applied for the position for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I, I live in Oregon City. I moved here in the migration of 75, so I've been here forever. Mm -hmm. um, my business has always been downtown Portland, and then, um, and I've always been fairly active in many communities, except for my own, mm -hmm. except for the very early years, okay. because I'm involved in community where I'm actually working. Yeah. So um, I was involved in Oregon City's politics back in the early 80s, back during the burn plant time. And then after that, I worked in Portland, so I stayed downtown Portland. I worked um, closely with the OMSI and the salmon camps, and um, I had three sons. So my interest in outdoors and wildlife comes from me th shoving it down their throats. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a wonderful place. Um, the reason I've turned towards Oregon City is for the last Five years I have been working, well, 10 years I've been working out of my home in Oregon City, five years being in my home. Um, and that was just due to family matters. Um, so I spent a lot of time driving up and down the streets in Oregon City at a five mile per hour pace, mm -hmm. looking at our beautiful town. Um, one of my projects in order to keep active was one day reading in the newspaper about our heritage tree program. Mm -hmm. And I said, looks like something I can do. <laughs> so I made it my little mission to pass out as many applications for heritage <laughs> trees as possible mm -hmm. in Oregon City, That's wherever I saw a pretty Thank tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like a business card for every 300 you pass out, one may call back. Mm -hmm. And that's the basic truth. Um, <clears throat> And, and since I've been a bit of a thorn in some people's side, more of a pest, just because, again, finding out the systems and way to go through things, I find yourself knocking on doors a lot and asking lots of questions. I'm not afraid to ask a dumb question. What 
is a GSI system. <laughs> GIS. GIS. GIS system. <laughs> but anyway, I assume it's a mapping system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I'm not afraid to ask a dumb question. Mm -hmm. What I do have is my time. I've recently retired. Mm -hmm. um, I'm active. <coughs> I'm not afraid to be outspoken. Mm -hmm. I think when I think of natural resources, I think of what we can save mm -hmm. and not pave over. Um, what trees we can save, what resources valuable we have in our own backyard mm -hmm. that need loving tending. Um, how can we get volunteers mm -hmm. to come about? And that is really, really hard. I've done that in the artistic field and everything else. Mm -hmm. Most people only come out in anger, not in praise. Mm -hmm. This place is not full because you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, people will be here rattling your cage is going, what's, what's going on? Now, I'm sure with the Newell Creek coming up, I know that I'm planning to attend that meeting just because I need to find out more. I looked at the little 12 acres that they uh, purchased recently. It's a beautiful pit, 12 acres. It will clean that neighborhood up so much. Once they get a little parking in the area and make it loving, the, the neighbors in that area, I think, will take pride. There's a few real nice ones, and then over the side, it's sad. It could bring up someone's pride. I wish they could buy the lot behind it, the old younger spots. Mm -hmm. I know Oregon City. I know the people in Oregon City. Mm -hmm. I know some of our old shady history. We're one of the last capitalistic capitals in this side of the West. What's it going to be built on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but with, with that said, I, we, can, we, can reserve, we can save so much. Mm -hmm. And that's... Um, basically why I, I've been asked, why don't you join a committee? Um, so I, I filled the application because I was a week late. I saw it on my neighborhood news, as you can see it was handwritten. I turned it in a week late mm -hmm. because I, gee, I didn't see the date. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I, once it's on my calendar, I'm after it. Once I make a decision, I'm gonna go after something and outline it, I educate myself on it. Mm -hmm. So our best friend is Google. Mm -hmm. Um, and I and I look <coughs> to other plans. Vancouver's done some incredible things on their van, their um, uh, street planning and slowing down the traffic. I, I empathize with my neighbors, but am I the one who was always at my Barkley Hills neighborhood meeting? No, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm always coming home late. And I never get there. Yeah. And recently, I, I don't have an excuse for that except for, gee. I think I need to go meet some of them. Mm -hmm. Once you meet people, then you say I'm going to go over and and, and that's how that ball starts. Mm -hmm. So uh, my background, sales, marketing, sales, and branding. That's what I did in Portland um, for 16 years. I owned a retail store in Old Town, Portland. Mm -hmm. So that's where my focus was in Old Town. Mm -hmm. um, and then my children were in OMSI, and I did environmental middle schools. I helped start in those. Um, resources because that's where my kids were. Mm -hmm. um, have I saved a park lately? No. <laughs> have I done a couple of trees? Yeah. Have I seen one <laughs> blow down and have to chop back up? I saved the sign at least. <laughs> mm -hmm. And hope to, to do something again. I hope to make a, leave a mark mm -hmm. in my community at this time that I have available because mm -hmm. I'm basically quasi retired. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, is there any questions you have of me? Oh, I just gave you a spiel. I just gave you a pitch. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a salesman. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just, Go ahead. What are your questions you have for me? Yeah. Uh, you, you've, given, you've given us quite a bit of information, and I appreciate it. Uh, I, uh, I noticed uh, you're reading, uh, you were involved in the... Uh, the, the uh, incinerator issue, of course, yeah, that was, that was, that a, was a citizen's <laughs> admission and went under the, the ballot to prevent an incinerator from coming in. Uh, the, um, you've indicated you've been pretty busy in terms of your profession and, uh, until recently. Um, I, I guess uh, you're familiar with, and I'm, I appreciate the fact that you know about the, the presentation that's going to be made tomorrow night. At Jackson campus, uh, I'm just wondering uh, how how do you think we could relate better with our neighboring 
uh, entities, and I'm talking about the county, the metro regional government, and so forth, in terms of of how we grow and how uh, how we can embrace uh, impact. a plan together. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I've watched Metro do a, a, a lot um, in Portland and in our surrounding areas. I have more faith in Metro than I think a lot of people do. Um, because I, I think their interest in, in is at heart, although we could get really commercialized, I try to leave as much stuff as natural as possible. However, you have to have comprehensive trails. Is that, are we going in the right direction on this? Um, because I don't know the complete outlet, except for when I saw that there were going to be bike trails, I thought, okay, we have to be careful of erosion because we have such a, um, a slide issue in our in our community. Horrible slide issue. We have to maintain our trees. That's the only way we're going to maintain our hill slides. Um, and I really like the idea that they want to leave as much growth. They want to slow the water down. I love all that. There are things that I kind of scared me, and that was the mountain biking trails. However, we're becoming a bike city, so you have to embrace that. But you have to marshal it, too. Um, Forest Park. I worked in a lot of Forest Park with my son with Ivy Reclamation um, during his middle school years. Bikes can be really destructive, just like people can be. So it has to be... Um, I think given something majorly extreme for them so they don't want, I don't know, I don't know how to, I, I, again, it would be discussions. I, I think I've kind of just gotten way off the beaten track on, on <laughs> I didn't answer your question very well. Um, however, I, I do have more faith in Metro than I think a lot of people do. I really love that the community down there seems to be embracing it, seems to be jumping down in there and volunteering already. And that's beautiful. And I think they should have the biggest voices, those that are down in there chopping away. Um, but again, it's, it's leaving things as po natural as, as at all possible. I mean, that's an old bogging area. People used to take their trucks down there and and mud run all over. Can you imagine what that did? We don't even, that used to be an old cutthroat um, tributary <coughs> back in its day before the housing. So that, that's a real, New Creek was a really special, and still is, a really special little creek. Um, and the butts up to my backyard. I used to have elk come up and graze, not elk, Big deer, <laughs> big deer, <laughs> come up and graze in our in our street because we butted up to that canyon. I remember the wild pigs yeah. and stuff in the old hog farms and stuff. That's that's a treasure area, and I hope to see it really be embraced because that canyon was chopped right in half. Where um, I've got I, a I, question I, on on where do you went to college? I can't. I'm trying to. I can't I read it very well, but what's uh, the I, I, Monterey? I terrible. I whipped that out thinking. Oh. Monterey what? Monterey Peninsula College, which is now um, the USC campus um, down in California, Monterey. And then I went to Haystack Hinkley School of Arts and Crafts. Oh, okay. And you got a BS in? Bachelor of Science and yeah. Bachelor of Arts. In what? In art. Art, okay. Yeah, chemistry, uh, right. chemistry of art. Well, how does art. the... You know, the branding and marketing is kind of interesting to me. Um, how would that uh, come into environmental issues relative to, you know, uh, public outreach and so forth? Because that's kind of what it's about, you know? Part it of is. And, and if I was to try to reach out to our community, Oregon City is a very small community, we would have to either have it directly into their face or embrace it with almost a handshake. You, have to, you, you would have to definitely start having somebody go out to every single one of the neighborhood meetings find it, and be more active on our community. I've just only recently joined our community association, neighborhood association on, on uh, neighbor, what's it called? Neighbor association. <laughs> but anyway, you'd have to be far more active in that and clearing up situations that get real out of hand. The reason I even knew about the trees that were assaulted in Waterboard Park is because it was so flippantly talked about on our neighborhood association. I said, you can't flippantly talk about trees that were moved out of a natural, out of a city park without 
And then it was like, oh, this, you know, if the first thing you do is they start blaming cities and stuff, you need somebody to come in and say, oh, hey, you have questions about this? Well, here's kind of the skivvy so far on it. it um, things get out of hand in, in communities where they take things out of contact. And by, with marketing and in branding, if you have something like Friends of Trees, when, uh, when you go by all the time, you see all those little patches, you're gonna say, that was a Friends of Trees. Um, natural resources, maybe we just need a logo to work off. So if we know that this project's happening, why? Because our natural resources committee's working on it, or our parks committee's working on it. Um, so okay. it's kind of uh, constantly in everyone's mind. Why is this here, this tree? They have to be more emphasis on we save this little grove, why? And what does it, what does it do? And start giving people bragging rights. Yeah. Give them to them. I was willing to pay $75 to stick my mom's name on a tree. Why? Because I wanted my mom's name on the tree because they wouldn't let me put my boy's name on another tree. Yeah. I'm willing to pay for those bragging rights. Everyone is. Okay. And so I think I think you could kind of go after like buy a brick, buy a sign, buy a tree. Okay. You want to buy your tree? Buy a tree. It's okay. Buy it. Put your name on it. I'm going to pass that to the next person. <laughs> Sorry, <I think. laughs> Jerry, you're next. I have no questions. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy. So let's. Okay. Oh, I could take a whack at one. I suppose. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, you, you said a bit about Metro, and, and you obviously understand that, uh, you know, they have a lot of time, effort, money, and determination that they've pointed toward some important natural resource issues in the area, like Newell Creek Canyon, and if anything, the, the challenge is sort of how, how do we grab onto a piece of that, and, and how do we make a piece of it work uh, to our advantage as well, I think. But I think you already pictured that. But we've got another great big thing going on down here where the uh, uh, Blue Heron Mill stood for many years. Dying to walk that. And, and see it's the same down. thing. I mean, um, Metro's involved in it with a lot of interest and momentum. Uh, a private developers involved in it with a lot of interest and momentum. The city is certainly involved in it, but most of their interest and momentum is about the commercial development aspect of it. Uh, have you got any suggestions for where you think the city's natural resource interests ought to focus on that whole big chunk of land on there? Starting from, <laughs> if we can get a strip of property almost all the way from Kanema on the other side, but where that big old fishing that old boat ramp is, mm -hmm. that is a treasure up there for natural water resources, both motor and non-motorized. Right now we have more non-motorized boats on the river than we have motorized, so there's a bigger voice with the canoers, kayakers, paddle boarders, and natural swimmers. We have the cleanest water, our cove, and all of Portland, and we all know how they come down for that. We ought to promote them. We need to get them. We need to get those kind of people on our thing saying, we want to start swim meets. We want to start doing canoe meets. We have a, the, the canoers then the kayakers are a powerful force. And I think that the city, cause there's a couple of things I think that really we could make some money and, and, and I don't know how to quite promote it and stuff, but I think that making sure that whole waterfront has access to people walking up and down it, putting somewhere up in the front, and it should be run for our city or by somebody that where the city could get proceeds for rentals for all those little kayaks, only non-motorized things where you can lock them up there, rent it, and then you utilize that. People will leave their stuff down if they're somewhere to moor it. There's no mooring from here to Portland. No mooring at all. However, I bet you next month, next year, they're gonna have mooring down there because I've pestered them three times. And the last time I was down there, they said, well, we've been thinking about that. You know, there's been interest. I'm going, the interest is me. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, okay, well, Maybe I not to talk about it anymore because I really think that's a little money maker at every single one of these lots. There's we could put in the lock up canoe areas and, and, and sell them at as rentals. 
at that point, you have more people down there watching our river that have real concerns about a river and that are wandering and meandering at it. I'm up and down there with my dogs all the time. We see so many cool beaver activity. They should be night camps for critter camps mm -hmm. in Oregon City. And some of our natural spots, I have no idea where, but I, a critter camp at night would be so much fun to watch our river. You know, project that on our elevator, <laughs> you know. How much press did we get out of when the little beaver came into town? <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff that puts Oregon City on the map. And, and we, we have that elevator we could promote like nobody's business. We have a natural resource. They keep saying that we are the next Niagara Falls. Let's hope we don't become Rochester. Who's been to Rochester lately? That is a bit. <laughs> a pit. We all want to go to the Canada side because it's pretty green and they saved it. So I really think we have got to be very outspoken and follow what we can do and Oregon City needs to be grabbing whatever they can get as far as a natural resource along that river. I mean grab it and work with Metro, work with anyone you can. But we've got to say yeah you want to come over here? Well come on over. We have a nice public ramp and Go pay for your parking. <laughs> you know what? I mean, there are things that we can do, but we should snag on to as much as that beautiful. And if we're going to go on about, about our blue heron and save some of those beautiful buildings, some of them look absolutely like crap, they're going to come down. But you might as well tell the story as what it was. And that really is conquering that area. Um, Kanima's name is Canoe Place because that's where the canoes used to place their canoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we need to embrace that natural resource and and somewhat apologize for a little of our pack history, but we can say we're moving forward and embracing it into a beautiful thing that we need to be able to have everyone get to it. I don't know, I, and I, I don't have an opinion on the locks. <laughs> I keep my mouth shut on the locks. <laughs> Not in Oregon City, anyway. I'm <laughs> sorry, I am a bit passionate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you, that's good. Your turn. Do you have any questions for us? Where? All right. For one thing, I know the positions go one, two, and three year. I assume I am interviewing for a one year to get your feet wet type of thing. They were the initial terms were one year. So the terms will, will be three years mm -hmm. from here on out. But uh, Brian's term, and from what I understand, you're stepping down at the end of the year. Um, that term ends at the end of 2017. Well, I just didn't know if I was stepping into a one, three year, year if I, you know, I kind of do things on a five year plan. Um, because in about three years, you know whether you're going to be bailing or not. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that I can always be a kind of a a different sounding year on different issues. It, it, normally, it'll start off as a, th as a three year. We do have people that leave, and there, and we fill out that period of time. Uh, okay. But we're interviewing for a three year per, uh, three year term. These are all three year positions. Yeah. yeah. And I do go down to um, Southern California. I have a son down in San Diego, so I go down there about three times a year um, for about a month at a time, um, and sometimes a little longer. Uh, so as long as I kind of know how things are happening, what projects we're working on, um, I'd like to focus on them and to help in any way, shape, or form. And then just make sure that I schedule my time so I don't miss a whole bunch of meetings, because I think you can miss three meetings excusable and then after that it's in. really shame we on can, you. We can have telephone. Uh, yeah so and yeah. I and I've done I I've always been the satellite business for the last 10 years with my magazines and so um, and I'm a, I'm a bandstander if there's something to be done it needs to be stuck in front of the public I'm better in front of strangers than I am people I know <laughs> I do trade shows you throw me in a trade booth that's what I do I meet every person so that's when I meet you sometimes I fake a conversation a because there. faces don't do. stick with Get me the anymore word out. <laughs> so <laughs> um, okay. any more questions I, I you know I, I 
I'm just here to serve and, and trees are a passion. Green spaces are my passion. And um, I've met with and worked with a lot of cool people. You're a very enthusiastic so. mm -hmm. candidate. <laughs> I'm out there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Before. Uh, Madam Chairman? Yes. Uh, um, is this a, a serious candidate with Selmo Clarkey at Stinking Desert? Well, I started that. studying Selmo Clarkey 40 yep. years ago. Yep. And uh, a lot of them live in the stinking desert. Yeah. Yeah, so. It seemed like a natural. Plus, as a fish, fish biologist, uh, my wife actually gave me that name right after we met 42 years ago. So, uh, she was the one that started that. But they're now called Oncorhynchus clarkii. But I'm a dinosaur, so I'll stick with the dinosaur yeah. name. <laughs> I have most of the questions memorized. <laughs> no, but we haven't been asking those questions. <laughs> okay. Do you have a different sheet for me? You may deviate from the script. So, All righty. So why don't you, why don't you tell us um, how this year has gone for you and um, why you're willing to, to continue? Well, um, it's actually been uh, pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the only thing of substance that's come up is the cove. Um, and I do have some concerns with that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I was around long enough to really uh, get my feet wet or you know get a real feel for where we were going, what we're gonna do. And um, it seems to be kind of an evolving thing anyway. Um, I'm a little behind in my reading. I'm not sure if we have a mission and statement and vision. Yeah, the, the bylaws and, we're, and the bylaws we're, we're, were adopted, the new bylaws, mm -hmm. yeah, by the city commission. So um, <clears throat> I'm embarrassed to say I can't recite them. Man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite all right. They were only in draft form until recently, so. Um, but I, uh, I've gotten to uh, be involved in some things that are of great interest to me and specifically answer that question. Um, we had the recent uh, coordinated weed management association meeting in Oregon City and um, I probably wouldn't have known anything about that if um, I hadn't been a member of the committee. and. Uh, the control of invasive species is one of my uh, real passions or <laughs> something that I've and something that I've done a lot of planning for in the writing of uh, property management plans for invasive species control. So I enjoyed being involved in that and um, I plan to stay involved with that group. Um, on behalf of Oregon City or not, even if I was just uh, on my own behalf. So I would like to stay involved and, and um, see how this thing goes and, and uh, see what we can do with it. I have a few ideas. Um, I think, uh, you know, we had the, the uh, table at the uh, First city celebration during the 40 or 100 year rainstorm event we had that day. And uh, <laughs> uh, if we could do more things like that, definitely would get out. I also have an interest in social media and um, uh, find Twitter to be of great use and benefit <coughs> uh, if it's actively used. Uh, but I know that. Uh, 
neither Oregon City nor this committee specifically are involved in that kind of an effort, but that is a possibility in the future. Um, anyway, I, I really like this area. I like the natural resources. I'm uh, quite fascinated with the uh, Oregon white oak savanna. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong interest in the use of native plants for landscaping. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd like to stay involved. And Great. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a, okay. a technical question. Uh, not, not, not a natural research type of question. You say the county South End Road, are, are you within the city limits? No, I'm, I'm, I uh, filled a, I guess there's two seats that are, that don't have to be in the city. Yep. No, I am not in the city limits. Okay. So we're looking to fill his seat, somebody that actually is not residing in the city, is that correct, Pete? I'm, I'm the other one. Hmm? I'm the other one. Well, that's not the, my, my oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm asking about the position we're filling. Oh, okay. Good question. Mean, well, the one I'm, I filled one temporarily that were represented outside the city, and it expires December 30th. I understand that, but the yeah. question is, we're interviewing for that position. Is that right, Pete? Um, I will need to check. That's on true. That because the That's way the the way the wording in the, <coughs> in the bylaws is oh. is that you live, work, or do business in Oregon City. Two, uh, so oh. I can check to make sure that everybody's ready to be. Uh, I mean, I, I know we've got certain committees where we have we have positions for people outside the city, the library board being one of them. But right. uh, I, I think we got to clarify that. Because if that change with position, the new. If you're filling a position that in fact is designated to be somebody that's not in the city. Right. Then, if that's the case, uh, you may be the only one. You may be the only one that qualifies. I don't know. Well, well I guess I'm confused. I, uh, I'm confused too. Well, he's. Uh, uh, what What is he now? Well, that's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's saying he's filling a county position. Right. right. What? Yeah, he's one of the two that don't live in the city. Right. Right. So but what, I'm assuming we can just re. Yeah. Wouldn't that be reposition him? <laughs> To the same position, which would still be. But my, my, qu my, my question still is: Are we interviewing for a position that is specifically a out of the city, out of the city position. position? That's a good question. Well, does it have to be? Is the I next don't question. know that the terms are filled filled primarily on that basis. I, I'd have to check with the city recorder to make sure. Okay. Can can we? Well, and, and can Brian we? Brian's willingness to. Uh, and his term would open up another position. No, no, I understand but, that yeah. as well. But the, there's still only two that. Well, maybe we be. can ask Pete to report back on that. I will right. report back on that as soon okay. as I can. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Up until this moment, I thought you were interviewing for two openings. We are. One that had to be in the city, and one that could be outside the city, which is the one I feel now, mm -hmm. which expires December 31. Mm -hmm. Right. But. Right. Uh, if Pete's not sure, then I'm not. <laughs> we will evaluate the makeup of the committee as it stands with the outgoing members and see what, where that leaves us because your, yours will expire at the end of 2015 and you're a city. And, and the position that yeah. Bill is in expires yeah. at the end of yeah, this year. Right. Yep. So, okay. Are well, you in we'll, the we'll, we'll, we'll get that one straightened out. I we'll thought I had, in the I had to ask that question. Yeah. So there are, let's see, three potential vacancies? Is that what we're saying? If mm -hmm. Brian were to resign yes. as yeah. well, yeah. and yeah. just shared with us, okay. that right. would be three. Okay. Right. Uh, <coughs> well, now I'll, I'll ask, and I'll ask a question that's more germane <laughs> to the interview. The, uh, <laughs> Uh, what exactly uh, did you do at, uh, in, in, the, in the case I didn't hear it when you were talking about it, the Department of Natural Resources and Wildlife there in Colorado? What was your position? Uh, I was uh, the Habitat Department Manager for 25% of the state coverage. I had the Northwest region. I had uh, 42 state wildlife areas numbering about 
150,000 acres total maybe. Um, had environmental program. I uh, implemented the first field D GIS in the country of any kind. Really? Way before anybody like Oregon City did or anybody else. Uh, we commenced that in 1979 and that was done uh, in cooperation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I also did uh, a lot of habitat management, uh, both terrestrial and aquatic. I had a crew of inmates and we did a lot of river stabilization, bank stabilization, bioengineered bank stabilization. I was the state of Colorado representative for the Division of Wildlife to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for their program in Colorado because they have three districts in Colorado due to the nature of it being on the Continental Divide. So I had to coordinate between the three districts and the state of Colorado. Um, land use planning, restoration, habitat management. I purchased several big properties on behalf of the Division of Wildlife. Uh, some involving, um, well, one was $2.4 million and several that were 900,000 in that neighborhood. Outright purchases that well, we were buying fishing access or hunting access, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, so. Uh, fairly varied background. I was this fisheries department manager for a couple of years and uh, I had seven full-time professional biologists and a budget of about two and a half million dollars mm. annually. Mm. You were all uh, just getting back to you on that uh, issue uh, under the qualifications clause of the c code it states, five of the seven members of the committee shall reside, work in, own property, or own a business within the city of Oregon City. So if we, if all three applicants are appointed, we will still be within the range of those qualifications. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, sure. Well, anyway, I enjoyed doing all that stuff, and I wasn't ready to quit when they retired me. <laughs> I retired from the Division of Wildlife because I couldn't handle the driving and the um, keyboard, all the keyboarding anymore. And uh, then I went to work as an environmental consultant uh, in the oil and gas business, uh, mostly writing invasive vegetation management plans, which... Uh, kind of slides over into some of my interests here. Mm -hmm. Your your experience is vast. It's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. 42 and, um, years, you get around the block, I guess. How do you feel about being able to implement things or make things happen in Oregon City, having been in, <clears throat> involved for now a year? I think it's going to be challenging. Um, I think things like the Heritage Tree Program are pretty straightforward. <coughs> I think it's very straightforward and uh, something that we can handle and, and uh, something there won't be any disagreement about or anything like that. But I am concerned about other things like land use planning <coughs> and, and that sort of thing. Um, I have a concern about these type one, type two, type three planning department decisions, frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, it sounds to me like, uh, well, I question that some of the impact of decisions that can be made without uh, public involvement I, are a concern to me. Let me, let me say that any, any decision can be, can be used. I, I, I was going to use the word challenge, but the fact is you, you can, provide testimony even for any of the types of decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I saw something going up in one of those lower type decisions that were a piece, a piece of development was occurring within the, within the, within, outside, inside the buffer oh, zone yeah. and, and they put a stop order, work order on it. I mean. But it was only because you noticed it, so. Yeah. You know, I, I 
hadn't heard about the waterboard park tree thing. I haven't heard a thing about that, and I probably was the second guy that knew about it. Called Ginger and said, hey, should we have a little talk about this at our next meeting, but... Uh, we forwarded it to the appropriate parties. The parks Bill yeah. did the right thing, but yeah. still, yeah. you know. And we're uh, still prosecuting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'd like to at least know what's going on, and I also, I can't believe it hasn't been in any kind of local news. I but <laughs> but getting back to your point, Bill, on, on the various types of decisions, I mean, that's something that it takes a lot of staff outreach to help people understand why the decisions are of a certain type. The ones that we call type one are intended to be for things like building permits and signed permits and sure. things that are issued over the counter things right. you don't even need a permit for technically as long as you meet code uh, and if they're clearly and objectively meeting code then those are supposed to be type one decisions when the use of discretion comes in that's when the decision making process starts to evolve into type two and type three and type four so and know, I, I think you I think yeah. in fairness the I think the planning department has uh, mm. uh, in, in the recent year or two has been uh, Getting us the information that we can look at, see what's going on. Oh right? yeah, yeah. So I, I no, I wasn't suggesting yeah. that at all. I'm yeah. just talking yeah. about yeah. some things that yeah. that I've come across. And no, no, generally speaking, just like weeds. I I wrote that email to Pete, and I really didn't mean to for it to go out, but you know, I went straight to uh, John Lewis, and and the next thing you know, I had an email from him, and and. I think they're doing a good job here, and I just want to keep it up, but I know there's uh, I don't like the attitude of throwing your hands up in the air over English ivy. Uh, I know Rewild Portland's doing a tremendous job with English ivy, and they have the basket weaving classes and everything, so to me, that's something I'm always going to be going, hey, you know, sure, there's people that are going to say, that's my favorite plant on earth, and if you <laughs> touch one of my vines, I'll get the shotgun out. Okay, that's a, well, leave your property alone, you know, and, and you can have it, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I guess enough said about that. I, I do have some ideas of things that uh, are similar to the wildlife programs I did where cooperative habitat improvement, uh, Mm -hmm. Didn't, wasn't there a small grant program for the Natural Resource Committee for a while? There is the Metro Enhancement Grant process, which applies to all kinds of projects, but it wasn't tailored to natural resources per se. You know. yeah, oh, yeah. Parks, proper natural areas, pretty mm -hmm. much. Then there's the Metro Enhancement Grants pro Program, which is up to $25,000 for restoration grants and that sort of thing. Yeah, and that's a yearly, what is it? I'm thinking about yeah, that from my own property. Or nature in the neighborhood. Nature in the neighborhood. Any of those, yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. Of those yeah. that they're, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, you have observed the, the community participation, which is disappointing to me. There's times when we're dealing with things here, like Waterboard Park, or the tree ordinance, or whatever, we really had some participation. Uh, how would you see us getting the, the public excited enough to attend a meeting. I feel like we're talking to ourselves, personally. How well, do you feel? That is one of my concerns. And uh, I have racked my brain. And uh, the only thing I, I can say that I know for sure is that social media is really powerful. And if you don't believe that, you missed the parade Monday and the party last night for the timbers you know our parade was yesterday but um the neighborhood association meetings seem to be you know the ones that are functional are a pretty powerful force and um it would be good if we were all active in our also in our local neighborhood association i guess and uh I'd have to find, I know there's a South End Road Association, but I haven't tried to uh, get involved with them yet. But um, 
you're, you're closer to a different neighborhood association, the South End, where you live. Yeah, there's the South End one. I know, but the neighborhood association closer to you is not South End. Oh, it's not? Hazel Grove. No, off them. Yeah. No. What, 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 but then you have your county, your county planning organization outside the UGB, which is... Oh. Well, no, I yeah. The yeah, I'm outside the UGB and everything, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I found out a lot about working on Metro's Oak Quest survey. So in answer to Trent, um, that's some new data that, that Oregon City doesn't have in their GIS yet. Um, That'd be good. Yeah. Tremendous, tremendously detailed white oak survey all over, almost all the way down to, well, it's the whole uh, urban growth boundary and a little bit outside as well, so. It's the, it's the Hazel Grove Westing Farms Neighborhood Association that abuts where you would probably live. Okay. South End, South End Neighborhood Association isn't a corner. That's closer to town. It's closer to town. Right. Yeah. The, what's the name of the one I live in? Hazel, Hazel Grove, Grove Westing Farms. slash Westland Farms. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we need to wrap up this portion mm -hmm. so we can yes. move on to the other <laughs> agenda. Items. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank Bill. You. I have an easy decision for <laughs> us <laughs> really? with the new information that we've had. I, have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought I better say it first yeah. because I, I don't. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about terms beginning next year, and you're mm -hmm. uh, and you're saying you will only go to the end of the year. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So uh, there's no point putting another advertisement. No. I don't think because that no. was intended for. Yeah, and we have uh, all the positions would be. And I'm, I'm impressed with the applicants that we bought. Very impressed. Yeah. 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 Any yeah. any concerns, or are we ready to entertain a motion? Or? I think so. Yeah. All right. I agree. I think we've got three qualified applicants. Okay. Well, I'm ready to entertain a motion. Yeah. Then. I move that we advance the three candidates' names <coughs> as interviewed tonight okay. <coughs> to the next city level. <laughs> I'll second that. Second. Uh, discussion. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay. Thank the, you. We don't we don't make the appointments the mayor does, but they they usually follow the recommendations okay. of the sure of the body. The the you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a public no. This is a public. Mm -hmm. You're okay. welcome to. Yeah. And Bill, you're welcome to come back now. This is way more comfy chair. No, no, I like those actually better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bring one up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Review the minutes, Pete. Is that what we're doing next? Yeah. So we have uh, minutes from August 12th, 2015. And at that meeting, uh, I was not present. Uh, Tony Conkle and Martin were, uh, I believe, uh, Laura was there as well. So. Um, you had a presentation from the Environmental Learning Center on the uh, ELC. Mm -hmm. um, Clackamas Cove project. Um, so John Van Staveren from Pacific Habitat Services presented uh, both of those as well as others. Uh, and then you had a presentation from Meyer, uh, about the Myers Road Extension Corridor Plan. Um, Status update on the work session request of that time. Heritage Tree nomination for 314 Pleasant Avenue and various staff communications and member reports as well. Mm -hmm. And I checked all the spellings for the names and I believe they're up, they're correct. Uh, if you see anything else that doesn't look quite right, please let me know. I thought it looked pretty good. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. Uh, discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Approved is written. Great. Thank you. Public comments? Having none? Okay. 
Oop. Proud to old business. It's moving fast. Yeah. Eight. Okay, old business. Um, so, uh, talked about the work session results. Uh, just give you an update. I had sent an email about this, but uh, okay. the city commission <coughs> did adopt your recommended revisions to the bylaws uh, mm -hmm. on the consent agenda with um, no disagreement or discussion at all. Um, so that is the culmination of a lot of hard work by all of you. Thank you. Um, and I think it sets us on a on good footing for 2016 and mm -hmm. moving ahead with uh, our work plan, which we can probably tackle next. And I know you have some concerns moving forward about how to maintain this momentum. So uh, we, should, we should talk about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put that on mm -hmm. the agenda for next meeting then, please. Mm -hmm. Did you have any <clears throat> discussion that you'd like to talk about on this? I think it's important uh, if they adopted <laughs> whatever they adopted. It's been so long <laughs> uh, that, that <laughs> our, our new members and, and people like Bill, and I'd like to see the, the uh, <clears throat> stuff again, you know, mm -hmm. see what we okay. had as our focus, our mission, which he's asked about. It's been so long. I'd like to have us all look at that again, not mm -hmm. to make changes just to have it in front of us. And any new member, I'd like to see them have that information. Okay. You want me to put that on the agenda, or do you want to talk about that now? Mm. I think if you just yeah. maybe, uh, can you attach the documents so that we can look at them via email? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. And we could yeah. then okay. have some dialogue mm -hmm. based on it, if it's necessary. Yeah. Well, our, our one of our new members potentially here uh, mm -hmm. was passing out literature about the heritage trees. It would be nice to have one little handbill that says what it is we do, mm -hmm. so we could distribute it to people. This is what, who yeah. we are and what we do. Yeah, it yeah. would be. Yeah. I see. So in terms of uh, new materials for outreach to the public, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, this is something we could uh, Highlight our <coughs> work plan. Mm -hmm. I know it is. I think we already have a work plan item in that mm -hmm. regard, but this is actually getting into a product yep. that we would put in to the hands of the public and, and get out there at various city events. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we did have one of the people just elected to, uh, or selected, I should say. To volunteer to work in that direction. So. And I can vouch for <laughs> Dee Dee. Uh, yeah, she uh, was, has been exactly. huge in getting the word out about the Heritage Tree Program at mm -hmm. the Friends of Trees event and the other events as well. So, yeah, yeah there's yeah. two sides of it: getting getting the flyer and getting it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and having it real short. Yeah. Five pros and three of uh, why you why you're scared of it, and most of it because people think their hands are tied. <laughs> yeah, that was the one of the comments on the Heritage Tree Program, and I don't want to get off topic, but you know, providing sufficient incentive for to get more trees nominated um, is that something that we need to write a grant for, get in a revolving fund, and get arborist technical assistance to take some of the burden off of a landowner designated next year <laughs> in perpetuity. Um, so that is something that the, the Heritage Tree Code revisions are going up to the Planning Commission. Um, they did look at it in a work session, and then they looked at it in the first public hearing, and now they're get, they tabled the public hearing to December 14th um, because one of the commissioners uh, was not present, and they knew it was near and dear to their heart. Um, but also to discuss the possibility of recommending incentives to the city commission in order to supplement the program. Uh, I didn't get a lot of, I didn't get any sense that was a problem with the code at all, the code that was recommended. They liked, they liked that. Um, it was more just fleshing out the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I uh, couldn't agree more. And I heard that echoed to, uh, by several people at the Friends of Trees meeting on Saturday, we were like, well, what kind of sins exist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's before uh, the City Commission or the Planning, planning Commission? Planning Commission, yeah. yeah. We December. decided to send it to the Planning Commission in a public hearing because it does affect property. 
is so, it? And, and then it? it will go to the city commission. When is yeah. it? December 14th is the okay. next planning commission one. Um, city commission will forward the recommendation of the planning commission okay. and you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is, I'm sorry, I wasn't following track. That's regarding the, her the heritage tree, tree ordinance. Heritage or trees in general? The, the new process that okay. we adopted the code for. Um, is that the yeah. same meeting that the Cove is going to be in? Yes. That's yeah. Um, yes. Actually, that's a continuation. <coughs> yeah. That's a, okay. that's a second. The natural resources document is 195 pages. And that's just right. one of, yeah, I, I don't know I, how many documents. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't count. That will be a long meeting. I'm not sure yeah. where we'll fall on, where the Heritage Tree Code falls on the agenda. <coughs> First, I hope. First, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I will pull for that, you know. Um, okay. Uh, so other things coming out of the work session was, you know, what is the communications plan? You heard Commissioner Smith say, well, what is the, uh, what is the protocol for getting a recommendation from the NRC to a, mm -hmm. a manager of a department? Is there one? Mm -hmm. He wasn't aware that there is a specific procedure um, and so I think that's something that moving forward I think there's good momentum there and there's a there's a recognition that the communication <coughs> needs to be improved and mm -hmm. is improving mm -hmm. so um, that's something that uh, I think we just need to publicize and keep moving forward on uh, mm -hmm. I think the best way to do that is to formalize our recommendations and continue to advocate for them and uh, send them to uh, department heads. Uh, Tony uh, Conkle obviously is aware of this and as acting interim city manager, he is in a good position to effectuate communications in that mm -hmm. department. Yes, most of us were actually, the majority of the committee was actually at that work session, I guess. So yeah. a number of us heard it firsthand, but still I did think there were some specific ahas like for instance, that question of is the link of the committee to the planning department is that the, is that the right um, mechanism and structure to have and it, that did come up and get talked about and uh, and it was agreed there evidently <coughs> or that's what I heard that yeah. that it was generally felt that was a workable structure there were good sides of it and sides of it you had to work at to make work right but the the bottom line seemed to be that there was no interest in changing that mm -hmm. no I did get that impression myself as well um, as and uh, still staying within the realm of the planning staff to to uh, be your staff liaison mm -hmm. and uh, that sort of thing so it was pretty clear to me that most of the city commissioners didn't know very much about what the Natural Resource Committee does, which was, you know, kind of the bad news. I'd, I'd like to hope we would do our level best to keep them informed, of mm -hmm. course. But the other side of it was they all seemed very supportive of mm -hmm. what I would have called a fairly broad role for the committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, they seemed anxious to get input back, uh, you know, when, when, we had, uh, when we had thoughts and recommendations to share, that sort of thing. I mean, uh, it seems, seems to me like they left a bit of a door open mm -hmm. for us. That was mm -hmm. my own impression anyway. You know, on this communication issue, <coughs> it keeps coming up and so forth. And <coughs> excuse me. And um, you know, we can say, talk about communication every meeting and in between meetings. But the only way it happens is if it, if it starts within the city, within the departments. Pete, mm -hmm. you know, it has to start there. You know, we're just hammering on the door basically but somebody inside the city has to believe that that is an effective way you know to to uh, communicate back and forth you know mm -hmm. and so I'm not sure how that happens mm -hmm. now you said Rocky Smith Commissioner Smith was interested in that um, he said but uh, what are the mechanisms and, for well yeah what are the mechanisms for yeah. communicating recommendations from the committee to to the city and 
in general. So um, I think that's something that still needs to be worked how, out. How would you answer you that if you were answering? Oh. <laughs> well, I'm being asked, so I guess I have to answer. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to answer that. And he, I've been on this he, he doesn't want to put you on the spot or anything, <laughs> but. Right. No, I mean, how would I? Well, in fairness, I, I mean, not. if you remember, I mean, yeah. about a year back or right. so at the time that, uh, you know, uh, Tony first engaged with us to talk about how the mm -hmm. committee would work, mm -hmm. we did talk about a fairly formal process of yeah. recommendations being right. developed by us, passed through you to the planning department, and mm -hmm. then... Uh, with presumably with some kind of recommendations or supplemental information then passed on to whoever the action organization is, whether it's the full city council, whether it's the right. parks department, whatever the affected. heck it might be in a yeah. particular instance. And we developed, you know, a sort of a draft template yes. to, to put that in writing. So that would be that my answer wondering. if somebody asked yeah. me. I yeah. mean... <laughs> And that was, you know, that was my preference was to use that sort of a template. And when we have a consensus decision or just anything coming out of the consensus of the group, that we put it in that. But it it could also be as informal as an email. Sure, could be. Um, could be. Because, and we see a lot of emails, but we do our level best to respond to them in a timely manner. So, um, uh, and I think our, our new uh, bylaws say that we will advise the city on issues uh, that deal with comprehensive planning and that sort of thing mm -hmm. when those projects are under review. Mm -hmm. So that begs the question, what happens when policies are not under review? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where some of the concern lies is that right. you know, if you see a, do you have to wait for the city commission or the planning commission to open up the policy arena before you make a recommendation? And I, I don't think you, as long as you put your recommendations in writing, um, then you're, you're, you're free to make them at any time. Uh, and then staff. I'd like some know. clarification about yeah. that because yeah. when, land use, when land use decisions are coming forward before the city commission, yeah, I'm talking that, about, mm. that issue has, and, and mm -hmm. somebody in the public wants wants to speak to that. Uh -huh. It that that had to be brought up at the previous planning commission. And I don't know if we have any more standing than a citizen does from that standpoint. Right. You're and talking about land use yeah, development review. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, we saw something and the planning right. commission had already made a decision, we had yeah. a concern about it, do we have really any standing going before the city commission after the fact as mm. a committee? At that, in that instance, there's there's no further comment that you can act on. But if you see something that's part of a building permit that's a concern and it's not, and the app and the developer is not following the agreed upon plan, you know, we follow up on that. Yeah. We, that's a code enforcement issue. I was referring more to legislative actions where you're forming policy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you're allowed to bring your bias and you can say whatever you want, that's fine. And uh, the open record so is. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. it, I think we yeah. I think it's really important that when we see these land use decisions coming before us, so many of them are really mm -hmm. not applicable to anything we do, but some of them are. Right. That if any one of us uh, sees something of concern, they need to actually put in a either a written statement or if we can have a meeting ahead of time that where they. Or we do it at, as a as a committee ourselves that mm -hmm. uh, that has to be done at the time the planning commission is making the decision. Yeah, ideally it coincides with that time period, but when it doesn't, yeah. members may have to act individually mm -hmm. because of open meetings law. We right. technically we have to provide notice of any decision where we're meeting as a as a public body. Yeah. And I would think, yeah. technically, that would only be the people who are residents of Oregon City that could speak. But that, 
No, no. Well, anyone, anyone from no. Yeah. You, you, we, um, many, many of our land use decisions come from folks that live outside the city. Right? Yeah, it seems to me our charter, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here I've been holding back, thinking, okay, I got away. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. It seems to me that the flow of our charter, as outlined, as I remember it, and I have, again I haven't seen it, but I'd like to see it again in simplified. <clears throat> allows us to go directly to the planning commission with observations or to the city commission mm -hmm. and and not necessarily have to take them through you is that true or not not that i'm true. objecting to doing that but i don't you know check me here but well yeah, I mean, it is do we, we can't, i don't recall you, you there's anything really written talk down about, about a separate you can't really talk about generalities when commission. you're talking about land use decisions because right. land use decisions right. are assigned a specific type of Get decision that. making okay. process. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. That would make sense. Um, okay. Type two decisions which comprise the bulk of the decisions that the city makes and for which they hire staff mm -hmm. are subject to a 14 day public comment period mm -hmm. within right. 300 feet of the property and no public hearing mm -hmm. as long as it meets code. And then zone changes, variances, master plans, other types of discretionary decisions are within the planning commission. And then, and then they go and some of those go on to the city commission for final approval. So um, master plans and zone changes. Uh, zone changes go to the city commission. But I'm saying those agree. are very structured processes. They're all so. very structured pro pro uh, processes, yeah. I, I guess I, I heard Jerry more, mm. I thought, Jerry, speaking to, uh, you know, if the committee has thoughts or recommendations on an issue, what are the paths we have to pursue to bring okay. those That's forward? And, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess what we were talking before about the structure of, of formal <coughs> recommendations of the committee through planning to whoever is appropriate, but it was interesting in the work session. I mean, there was specifically some discussion among uh, uh, city commissioners about how how they would know from us if there were long range issues that they should be thinking about. And of course, that kind of brings you back to that business of uh, us bringing forward a, a document prior to the mm -hmm. each new Goal city setting. commission's mm -hmm. priorities right. retreat or whatever right. you call it, you right. know. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course we developed something like sort of. that mm -hmm. for the last one. Yeah. It doesn't sound like the city commissioners actually saw it before their, that's their priority meeting, but that's maybe that's something we need to push a little harder as well, a group in the future. Well, I think now that they approved our bylaws yeah. that they would be more open to receiving in a document like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. that was the impression yeah. I got. Yeah. So <coughs> you can put that now. And the retreat is planned for February, is it? Well, we're in the middle of the budget cycle. There will be a retreat, but they're not going to open up the budget. Okay. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. 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 Two-year budget cycle. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That would mean it would be something the committee would want to prepare late in 2016. Yeah, it sounds like it. Commission's use, I guess. I think it could be part of our annual report on what we did this year and what we see in the future, and that could be part of that. Right. Document. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Communications from. Well, I have some old business. I think <laughs> maybe. Okay. Well, we have uh, a, a um, was uh, I was going to ask if t are we going to speak anything on the um, code project status update before we go down. I was going to broach that in, in the communications part yeah. of yeah. the agenda. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Yeah, that's the part we're at. Okay. We're now we're yeah. we're still in old business. Oh. Um, no, we're not. Yes, we are. There's only one item. You can do it now in communication. Uh, well, let's uh, add another item to the agenda with consent. What happened to the letter to CCC that we were talking about doing, the second letter that I resent out to everybody uh, about six weeks ago or so? Oh, yeah. I think it went to them, didn't it? The first letter did, yes. Okay. But the second I letter... did not receive that, I don't yeah. think. Oh. I, I, I mean, I... I Sorry, I've had a long day and a longer weekend, right. but right. Yeah. I'm not okay. prepared to well, answer that. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 
first letter was a general letter of support. Second mm -hmm. letter was some the, concerns. The issues, yeah. Well, yeah. Did anybody get the letter Specific from me or not? Well, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. A couple yeah. of I got it. I mean, uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pete, I, I actually sent it to you back. also. Did you? Because okay. you were mentioning you didn't have it because you were gone, remember, or something. Right. I can't remember the detail. Uh, uh, um, that was uh, what was the, uh, I think that, well, uh, I, I know for a fact that the uh, community college hasn't formally submitted yet and I think maybe the discussion was to hold off until they did but right well, that's uh, what I thought right. too yeah. that there was a question of yeah. when it would yeah. be appropriate okay yeah well um, I think it's appropriate now yeah <laughs> absolutely well absolutely. if they have if it's an action that hasn't been proposed what are we commenting on though? well we already know about it because it's been discussed at the meetings but they haven't proposed it it doesn't make any difference to me I think we ought to just. But they might not propose it. They'll, they'll propose it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but then. I, the point is that they're going to start in that project, yeah. I think, in May. Well, yeah, can, we've I had several meetings with when them. When it comes to my time, um, so that whole thing. Their bond okay. issue has time, is time sensitive. Ah, okay. Um, I, I, yeah. We can form and make the motion, but I think it should come out under. A letterhead from us that those uh, follow up yeah. that letter yes. directly yeah. to oh, them. I, I don't disagree. Uh -huh. I, yeah. I don't think we're. I know who I, you I, need I, to send it to exactly too. By the way, so well is it well it's the same person, isn't it? Well, I, I would send it directly to Bob Cochran and and the president of both of those two because Bob's implementing the project and the president is overseeing that it's done well. Okay. Um, well, when yeah, I mean, right now the record is not open. We don't have a record because there's been no lens use submittal. But I would, you know, I can save it for when it does. Um, That'd be okay. I heard that they had gone to their board for approval of the master plan before they submit. So, the the Clackamas Community College board and their board did approve it, by the way. Right. The master okay. plan. So oh, weeks, two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. But okay. Okay. Now we are talking about the same thing, aren't we? The new building. Yeah. Yeah. The phase okay. one building. Yeah. Yeah. Which I haven't actually seen a, okay. a submittal for. Yeah. Well, yeah. is it possible that you There's could some, uh, go ahead and put that letter together and send it out to us so we can take a look at it? Yes. I mean, I, I don't want is. to continue yeah. putting this thing off. Uh, oh, it's not my intention to delay. Yeah. I just uh, it's probably way down in my email somewhere. Yeah, so okay. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now my understanding is that they're working with you, both you and Shaw Spady. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know where we are on the agenda right now. Are we under personal communications? Is yeah, that we're getting there. That's, oh, okay. That's well, the next I, well, I can, I can take care of this real quick. The, the ELC letter went to them, but not the Clackamas Community College letter because that's a separate application. Right. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about, the LC letter? No, no, no. No, he's talking about Clackamas Community College. The second letter. Remember? For the master plan. Well, the second letter had to do with concerns that we had. Yes. yes. Right. About the yes. water. Okay. And hopefully, yeah. yeah. Beyond okay. the learning. Let me right. tell you about yeah. some of that now. Okay, Sean and I did meet with them and uh, in the president two weeks ago, and uh, I, I don't know what to say. It's almost like uh, watching the, the whole thing begin to move in a new direction. So I feel like... A lot of the concerns we had, for instance, the um, major changes to the site, there'll be major changes, but they've softened the effects, okay? They've asked me to coordinate Saturdays. It was my recommendation that we do Saturday Academy up there, starting in January, February, and March, every Saturday, have cleanup and enhancement events to get the place looking good hmm. before their May event, and then to stay out of the areas where major work is going to take place. They're totally good with that, and the president of the college really wanted to see that happen. Um, the um, um, intensive clearing of the site is not going to happen. There's 18 trees to come out of probably 300 up there. 18 is not significant. And then they're all to be reused. They're carcasses for some productive purpose. The other parts that they didn't include were the areas um, from the art department, which is on the north boundary, all the way to Beaver Creek Road, which is equal in size almost to the LC which was a part of the LC. They weren't including their work. Now they've asked us to come up with a plan to get the volunteers in there to do a re replanting operation, which we're going to do. So uh, I feel a lot better about it than I did before. 
Okay, and um, and all of you had that letter that we worked so you worked so hard on adjusting and so forth. They know about that letter <laughs> because we kind of alluded to it. All right, but they haven't seen it. And I I think that Bob Cochran will be the kind of person that will. He's a physical plant op operations manager up there, the dean of physical plant there in all the campuses. I think he'll, he's going to be very sensitive to that whole issue. So I I think some good things have come up of all this. Um, but the massive clearing and removal of stuff is not going to happen. Good. So when the letter comes back out to review, will you make recommendations if you think some of it should be modified or maybe include language? Sure. Acknowledging sure. The, the work that's going on now as a yeah. result of our previous... Yeah, I think we can even congratulate them on making yeah. some adjustments that were in everyone's spirit. You know. So... Right. But the are we talking about the letter of concern again? Is that, yes. That's what, yeah. that's yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. And that's what you were talking about, that they know about the... They know about? that there were concerns, because everything Sean and I talked about was based upon what we as a committee here were discussing, and we kept hammering away on those issues, and, and, and I could just see their whole thinking begin to... Especially when they're looking at budget. You start clearing the whole site, you've got yeah. huge revegetation costs. And so that was a driving force, too. But uh, it will be substantially different than it looks now, but it will still have the character that it has, and that's the important part. Because there was concerns about the off-site issues in stormwater and so right. forth. Right. Those things... when they come into that facility. Right, exactly. And, and now they have to address that because their um, water resource study that they did and their um, hydrology study said you will deal with the off-site water because you're not in compliance with the law hmm. and you must do that in any new construction and guess what they're going to build a new building in Barlow Hall parking lot mm -hmm. I don't know what the building <coughs> purpose is so that will have to address that water quality issue okay. which will help the LC too yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. so thank you all, all right. <laughs> all right Richard do you have anything to help me yep. Doug uh, y yes. But were you going to talk at all about the coal project? Sure. Okay. okay. Um, so Planning Commission will hear the Cove Master Plan, Detailed Development Plan, Water Resource Review, sorry, Natural Resource Review, coming up here on the... Uh, next Monday. 14th? 14th, yeah, next right. Monday. And so that will be... Laura Turway will providing a staff report and presentation um, and it will go into a great amount of detail on code compliance and how the application meets the zoning code what modifications from the code that the applicants requesting through the master plan process and uh, the phase one uh, detailed development plan which is the apartments on the glacier site and also we'll talk about the construction of the trail, the temporary trail through the property and the initial grading request above the high water mark. Um, and then they will talk about the future phasing as well and uh, what's changing from the original phasing plan for the development. Um, at this point, I don't have a, gr a lot of details because the, uh, the uh, the project is it's quite complex um, the hope is that um, if there is a continuation it would go into uh, it would only go into January and that the Planning Commission would would uh, make a decision on it and let by late January but um, that really depends on on several factors um, so my recommendation is that um, the committee take notice of the hearing and uh, attend if possible um, and listen to the presentation and then perhaps what we can do is discuss this on our next agenda because yeah. yeah. there will be time yeah um, and and we can form a uh, recommendation potentially yeah how's that mm. sound mm. yeah that sounds yeah. fine okay. um, mm. this is based on a discussion that Richard and I had my understanding is they are going to be responsible for uh, dredging out that uh, gravel bar uh, do you know if that is in fact one of the things that they have in their <coughs> master plan 
Um, I had understood it was. I would need to look at the recommended conditions of approval and see whether or not those are specific enough to deal with that because uh, I could tell. something of that nature that's so interagency uh, is going to, yeah. you know, we can only condition it based on coordination with another agency, in this case right. the Corps of Engineers. Yeah, uh, and they, yeah. there mm -hmm. has to be an approval yeah. for any dredging to occur. The, the yeah. previous thing, which I'm not even sure if it's still mm -hmm. in place, uh, is very inadequate, and I would not be surprised if there's not a substantial amount of new gravel there right now. Mm. Well, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see it from the other as side of the coast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as of last <laughs> night and the night before, you know, because uh, uh, those big events are when the bulk of the gravel moves. Yeah. And it, who knows? It could be blocked completely is, now. We don't is it know. Is it buildable land now? Is it? <laughs> a new block. I can't sure. believe it was. The ground water is buildable. I, I can tell you, yesterday the water was high enough that it, there was continuous to the river. I mean, you oh, yeah. yeah. Look over the bar, the water. It's, it's over the bar. Yeah, it's, wow. it's actually higher now. Yeah. Right. The, no. It's back up from the Willamette as normal. Yeah. 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 So. The, there was a meeting held on Monday with Tony Conkle and um, the developer, myself, and um, at the request of Brian Shaw, the, our, one of our commissioners, who's, I think, becoming a real environmentally <laughs> aware person. I'm very impressed with him. He's very concerned about the north end of the whole city and, and all the north end and, and interfaces with all these river issues and all that. And also, John Lewis is there. John has taken charge of the permit mm -hmm. and made sure the permit's still in place, and it is. Uh, it might have to have some adjustments made. But <clears throat> the real issue, I, I want to just say this, uh, to hear Ed tell the city staff that my project is doomed if we don't deal with this water quality issue mm -hmm. because the water quality is going to poison the ability to market the properties mm -hmm. correctly and they all heard that uh, also at that meeting was a man named John Runland some of you might know him uh, Brian and I met him um, one way or the other he's the coordinator of uh, the lower harbor trust fund projects that are occurring mm -hmm. in in this area mainly in Gladstone. And so he had a lot of things to say about what he could do to help make the cove even better once he understood what the interests were and the dredging, as long as the dredging included habitat enhancement um, in adjoining lands like Clackamas Park, he would be willing to do a master plan, oversee a master plan on the whole lower river and its dynamic, which has been yes. sorely needed. Yeah. So yeah. all I can say is this committee ought to give Ryan Shaw uh, a call and tell him how much you appreciate. He's really taking an interest in the natural resource issues related to the river here, right. Commissioner Shaw. And I think some really good things are going to come from this that we all might have wanted to have happen, but there wasn't the um, interest earlier. And the main issue is the Lower Harbor Trust Fund has millions of dollars available to do mitigation. And uh, the only people taking interest in it right now is Gladstone. That's from the previous council. And now Westland signed on as of a week ago. And um, so there's some opportunities for uh, Oregon City, I think, here. Mm. So, mm. But Commissioner Shaw, I really appreciate his leadership. Okay. So, Pete, is that is that part of whose responsibility is it to dredge the cove if it needs to be dredged at the mouth of the cove? Get it on Google Earth, and you won't say if. <laughs> well, I think maybe that's a question that needs to be answered at the planning commission. Yeah, itself. that's the yeah. real. Uh, I can't answer that. I, it yeah. depends what the purpose is for the dredging. I so mean, what are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we no, I, guess, I guess my question is <laughs> yeah. that yeah, we need if that if um, the developer thinks it needs to be maintained somehow, fixed, temporarily or whatever. Whose responsibility is that? In other words, is the developer proposing to pony up the money to do it? Or is he expecting the city and the county to do it? Hmm. Or what? Well, there was a, a rather strong proposal for the developer to take that on as his responsibility. I have not heard if that was finalized. 
But uh, well, I, no, that's what I'm asking. I'm right. asking well, whose there, responsibility. I don't think the question's been answered yet, even in the right. staff report. Um, Where's the property line there? The, uh, the center of the river, the edge of the river, the far edge of the river. It's still the city's land. When this whole project is built out, it does not belong to the developer. It's all city of land. It, so yeah, it's, you know, you could make all sorts of arguments about this, there. but. Well, and yeah. of course, the and state lands. Yeah, except for the state. Yeah, except for the state. <laughs> <Glass. laughs> there you go. You know about that, though. Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, there there have been so public <coughs> comments submitted already yeah. on dredging, but I'm just looking at the staff report that's prepared for December 14th, and uh, <coughs> they don't specifically respond to the dredging uh, comments just yet. Um, so. I, I would yeah. suggest that it's in the interest of some of our committee to make sure some of us are there at that Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very important. The other part of the whole thing, I guess, was uh, I remember the negotiations of our previous city administrator with certain commissioners <laughs> who didn't want anything to happen in mm -hmm. Cove uh, to retain trees and so forth. And the work that Brian did with Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and others, we all kind of thought there was going to be more tree retention on the east side. I, I thought I heard the last time our, the developer was here that that was not going to happen. Um, if it's not going to happen, I guess I kind of wonder why, because there's a lot of engineering money spent by the city to preserve certain groves. Yeah. But uh, Brian, maybe you got a better take on it. Well, that. according to the documents that are attached to all this, the, the primary group of trees that are going to be removed is the ones nearest Main Street. Oh, uh, there's a grove of cottonwoods right there. Oh, okay. And um, many of the other ones will be retained. <coughs> okay, well, that would so, be good. If and I, you know, it's such a huge mass of data that uh, it's going to take a while for anybody to get right. through it. Right. Uh, you know, like I say, the NROD application itself is 195 pages, and that's a lot wow. of document. Yeah, it's Yeah, crazy. so uh, fortunately, a lot of it is just location documents, maps, which you don't have to spend a lot of time on mm -hmm. since you already know where it is, yeah. hopefully. Well, well I sure echo things. Commissioner, I yeah. mean, uh, Doug's comment, so we sh as many of us should be there, this is a very important project, and, and we should set a strong tone in place. We'd, I, I would hope that we would like to see as much um, proper uh, approach taken to mitigate for wildlife problems and benefit the people. And I know the developers will do a good job, and maybe more if we ask. Yeah. Now, Pete, you mentioned that they're uh, using the previous application. Is that right? They're amending the previous application. Amending it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Meaning what exactly? Meaning many, many things. Uh, there are so many amendments, I couldn't cover them. Um, they, are they I'm, trying yeah. to? And I'm not the review and planner, Laura. Right. Is. Yeah. But that including yeah. enlarging the square yardage that they could r remove under that permit? Possibly. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Mm. okay uh, I will be there, but not for this committee. You're a neighbor? I'm a neighbor, but that's not why I'll be there. There is one that statement. Is there is one statement in the staff report here that states that, and you should verify this with Laura, um, that the tree removal plans submitted did not include removal of trees identified for protection in the 2008 master plan approval. What that means without looking at the plan sets, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's what it yeah. So that would be good. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. I know the challenge they had, they're trying to get a lot of soil for fill yeah. purposes and generally lay the grades back and the trees are in the way. So the engineering work that was done showed coving and, you know, changes in the topography. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of it interesting what they did, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that they've conditioned, and this is very common, they, the master plan is sort of preliminary review mm -hmm. and then there's always a condition to provide a revised and refined mitigation plan once you've done the preliminary review because 
as you get towards construction plan drafting, you have a much clearer idea of exactly which trees are going to be impacted. Um, so there's a condition in this case. Um, but that will be a topic of concern. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. Further communication? I got one. Uh, the, uh, the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council has been uh, <coughs> partnering, working with, I should say, uh, with the Public Works Department. I don't think I announced it here. I, I announced it at Parks and Recreation. There is a uh, stormwater outfall uh, in the cemetery that uh, mm -hmm. directs water down to Newell Creek. Mm -hmm. It's referred to as Scatter Creek. Mm -hmm. now, did I mention this before? Oh. I know I've heard about Scatter or, Creek. Yeah. I've heard of, but yeah. I'm not. It's it's called Scatter Creek because right. a lot of people will take right. ashes and so forth. And, right, right, and, and yeah. in that area, uh, it it's a stormwater system that that, co that takes out about that covers about sixty acres of, wow. of Oregon City, and okay. like so many of those, it's highly incised. Uh, the uh, uh, Nature Conservancy had a, a small amount of money that through the, the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council to assist on wetland de delineation. But the plans are to do work at that particular site to direct water, to improve the water flow out of the stormwater site in, into Scattering Creek and down into Newell Creek Canyon. And uh, that, uh, that it is is to have been done by the end of this year. So the and that's just the Sorry. wetland delineation. Mm -hmm. piece. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's go. Our Tree City USA application deadline is December sixteenth. So um, I've gotten all the data from the Parks Department and the Public Works Department, and we'll combine that with the Planning Department data and submit it. And is that an uh, annual thing? an annual thing uh, they let you do it online and uh, um, you have to show that you've you can upload a variety of pictures and documents and forms and um, you can either provide a work plan for your future activities in 2016 or you can tell them what you did in 2015 or you can do both and in, in this case we're doing both uh, because we hope to continue to work with friends of trees and next year in different neighborhoods um, and then uh, so once that's completed and compiled I'll, I'll share that with you um, and the friends of trees planting was a pretty big success uh, you know we had some uh, some uh, holes that were pretty hard to dig and had to be relocated in the, f in the street in the field <laughs> uh, but yes. most of them were properly located and uh, in spite of the conditions and we did great and we had really good uh, support and turnout um, from Singer Creek Coffee that donated a bunch of food and <coughs> a lot of people came out and that was good. Is that uh, primarily mm -hmm. street trees? Or? Primarily but uh, if people wanted a street a yard tree they did we did plant some in the yards yeah um, and I think probably what we want to do potentially with Friends of Trees is that they have a separate program for restoration um, and uh, open space and that sort of thing. So not just <coughs> yard and street trees as well. So it's something that I'd like to talk to them more about as well because they're a great, great organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, I'd just like to com commend you for your leadership in this Tree City USA thing. We wouldn't be anywhere without <laughs> your adv oh. advocacy, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's it's a lot of, you know, sort of pushing forms around. But <laughs> you know, we're good at that in planning. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, I think what it boils down to is when there's organizations in the region like Friends of Trees that are already doing this and they want to expand regionally into the, into the uh, outer lying communities and serve them, I think that's a, that's a really positive thing. And if we've been able to leverage the funds that we have amassed through various, various uh, sources, and, uh, this is a good way to do it. I think it's, it's good bang for the buck and 
the more important the most important thing not just getting the trees built but uh, in the ground but the community building that friends of trees does yeah. they emphasize very strongly making it in a community event and educating and advocating and then coming back and checking on the trees and letting the homeowner know how that tree is doing and uh, um, that is something that the city cannot provide at this point, but we can, through this process, supplement. So, mm -hmm. so, thanks. All right. Thank you. Mm. All right. Anyone else have anything to share? Well, I just wanted to make a little comment on my resignation. I'm involved in a lot of organizations. I'm been on the board of the Clack Conservative Youth Council for a dozen years, and it's over a million dollars a year in grants, and uh, all get accomplished every year. Uh, the Oregon City Parks Foundation, which is slowly getting going here, uh, and Oregon City CERT, and the chair of the Neighborhood Association, and, and various things. So I just have to cut back at this point. Uh, I feel I can get uh, a lot done, and some of these other locations so that's what are they doing and you may hear from some of these organizations before this committee at some point for my part brian uh, it's been great to work with you and yeah. i yes, really yes. want to thank yes. you for your service yes. yeah thank you yeah, yeah. yeah. you've been a, you've been a huge ways. asset to us yeah. yeah when we were all struggling to define ourselves you were right there that was yeah. important <laughs> Ill-defined. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a lot. I, I have one thing I want to send around the horn here. Uh, we were trying to keep the, the dream alive of the river <coughs> cruises to Oregon City. I said the Oregon City the way I did for a reason. Um, <laughs> but this is a bus tour. And the kids that have been trained, you'll see their picture on the back as this thing comes around, are the tour guides. Ten of them that are all the first youth tour guides in Oregon are going to be the ones that have to research. They have already researched two other cities. <coughs> We want to include Lynn City, reluctantly, and Lake Oswego, <laughs> reluctantly. Uh, they've already done the research on <clears throat> Milwaukee, the port of Milwaukee, and so this is a three-hour tour by bus with real good accommodations uh, at a number of sites, and it'll bring, we hope, uh, 50 people per weekend or more to the two museums, and the two museums will each get five bucks a head, which means something to them uh, starting in March, April, and May. We have more than two museums. Well, I know you do. Well, I, if we can figure out a way to tie in the McLaughlin Memorial, we will do it. Yeah, it's just it's a timing only, issue. It's only, it's only open We'd like to do that. Saturdays, but it is open Saturdays. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. We'll we'll try to do that. But uh, we're really trying to keep the dream alive of mm -hmm. people coming to Oregon City routinely. Mm -hmm. Five hundred came this last summer on the stuff we did. Wow. And I, we wished it would have been more, but the river was so low it was difficult. <laughs> But anyway, but I'm really proud of the kids because they had to figure this all out, the young people. So there are 10 of them, very well trained. So. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, Brian, we're going to miss you. Okay. All right. Meeting's adjourned. All right. Good deal. Thank, Thank you. you.